Welcome to Chats with Flo. I give self-development advice for your everyday life. Today's topic, dealing with loneliness as a pastor's wife. I have been there. I have been in that stage of my life for years. I felt alone. So if you are a pastor's wife and you feel like you are alone, in this video, I'm going to share four tips with you, four things that you can do to help you not feel alone. One of the most difficult things about being a pastor's wife is that when you are going through something personally, it can be something personally just within yourself or in your marriage, and you don't have anyone to talk to. You don't have nowhere to go. And the reason why you don't have anyone to talk to about personal things that you're going through is because of the fact that you are scared to trust someone. And the reason why you're scared to trust someone, because you know that it's a possibility that they may tell someone else and then other people will find out your personal business, which is not a good thing. So what you end up doing is you wear a mask. And the reason why you wear the mask is because that people expect for your life to be perfect. Not realizing that you are human too. Long as you're living, you are going to go through different things in life every so often. So a lot of times, even when you are around people or when you come to church, you're gonna have that smile on your face. I can like everything is okay, but everything is not okay. I have been there. Tip number one, find a support group. There are some great support groups on Facebook and I found two that I joined and I just love. One of them is called the Confidant for Pastors Wives and the second one is called Wife in the Fishbowl. I like both of those Facebook groups. And what's so cool about it is because you have a community of just pastor's wives. And whatever is discussed in a group is private. So you don't have to worry about anyone else knowing your business. And one thing I do like about Wife in the Fishbowl Facebook group is that they are going to ask you a lot of questions before you can even join. It makes me feel more protected. And another thing too, what's good about joining a Facebook group for pastor's wives is that you're gonna meet so many other pastor's wives and some of them you can actually build a relationship with. And so that way you won't feel like you are alone and you will know that to a lot of things that you are going through, so many other pastor's wives go through too. In a regular marriage, the husband and wife, they are there for each other. I mean, the husband can go to work and work a nine to five job. And once he comes home, he's all yours. But when you're married to a pastor, it's so different because most pastors, they are in love with their job. So they spend a lot of time dealing with church business. And the reason why is because they're so passionate about what they are doing. And so they don't really know how to manage their time, how to be temperate. And I didn't understand then, but I do understand now we are really passionate about something. You don't want to stop thinking about it. And you can actually do it all day and it doesn't feel like work. So what happens is when your husband comes home, he's exhausted and he's tired and all he wants to do is relax. So it's like you don't really have him there. You have his body there with you, but you don't really have him there with you. So the time that he is giving you, it feels like leftover time. And of course, that's not fair to you. I do remember times in my life to where I wish that I just had a regular husband. I wish that I had, um, I wish that he would just focus more on me and I 
wanted to know where I even fit in his life because I felt like I was less. Tip number two, find a hobby. The reason why I said finding a hobby because a hobby is something that you like and it's something that's just for you. Uh, for example, you can uh, start journaling, writing down your thoughts. And what's good about writing down your thoughts, it makes you feel better once you once you have written them down. And I don't understand it, but it's kind of like talking to someone. You know, have you ever had a lot of uh, pressure and you you felt so much better once you discussed it with someone? But that's the same way I feel when I write in my journal. Another hobby is uh, reading. Uh, what's so good about reading is you can read like whatever kind of books that's, that actually interests you. It don't have to be a certain kind of book. But what I love about reading is that it takes me away and it's like I'm living in someone else's world and, I'm, and I am actually experiencing what they are. But what's so unique about finding a hobby or developing a skill is that you're doing something that's specially just for you. And as a pastor's wife, you really need that. You need that me time, time that you are just focusing on yourself and what you need. Tip number three, exercise. Exercise is really important and the reason why is because it's really good for stress. I, I would say like at least four days out of the week, I go for long walks and sometimes I even jog. But what I love about exercising is that um, I'm able to think and I'm able to focus and it's my personal time alone and it also makes me feel good because i'm doing something positive for myself and not only that it even gives you more energy and it makes you feel productive when i exercise i have a couple of different playlists that i listen to it's just according to what mood i am in and it feels so good just to listen to my favorite music and get so caught up in the songs. I mean, sometimes I can even say like, if I'm going through a tough time in my life and sometimes you just want to uh, meditate. So when I walk, I listen, I listen to uh, worship music. It's just according to what mood that I am in. If I need something to pick me up, then listen to a lot of upbeat music. Music that make me want to move and even dance, even though I don't know how to. Tip number four, pray. If I had to rate the four tips that I gave, I would say tip number four is the most important important tip and the reason why is because prayer does change things. Prayer draws you closer to God and the Bible it talks about if you draw nigh to him that he will draw nigh to you and that's one thing that you are going to need as a pastor's wife or as a wife period. You are going to need to have a genuine relationship with God. Prayer does change things. When I think about some of the prayers that I have prayed over the years and how that um, it seemed like nothing was going to change. But once I actually not only just prayed about it, but once I actually gave it to God and stopped worrying about it, that's when things changed for me. For instance, uh, in this video when I was talking about earlier about feeling lonely and not having enough of my husband's time. I can say now, you guys, that we are in a totally different place in our marriage now. And it has been like this for the last three years. I don't have to long or ask for his attention. He's given it to me. He mentions in uh, solicits us doing things together, going out to dinner, 
uh, are just shopping together. He likes to shop. So sometimes I just go with him just to hang out with them. But what I love about it the most is he asks me. We spend a lot of our time now just watching movies together. And I can say now that he is at home at least, I would say 75 to 85% of the time now, he's at home with me. And uh, it feels good. And I am a witness that prayer does change things. But the key to prayer changing things is that you have to, once you pray about it, you just let it go. And once you let it go, that's when God will step in and do his part. I hope that this video was a help to you. I hope that some things that I said will be encouraging for you. If any of the tips that I talked about stood out to you, leave me a comment. I would love for you to share that with me. Thank you for tuning in to Chats with Flo. Have an awesome day. Bye.